Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CDL Podcast channel. In this episode today, might be a bit of a shorter one. We have a, a week break before we get into matches, but we're going to talk about some of the news, some roster rumors, optics continued, uh, no roster announcement that's kind of shaken up the scene. And then we're going to do New Year's resolutions uh, for each team in the CDL, kind of uh, obviously on brand with the recent holidays. It's uh, January 2nd when we're recording this, so Brock and I each came up um, with a New Year's resolution for each team, just something maybe they should like focus on or a goal they should set for themselves for the rest of the MW2 season as we head into, I mean, we got four more majors and champs left, so as we head into that, um, we also had pretty crazy support on the last podcast. It's at about 2,000 views on YouTube as well as a bunch um, on audio platforms. It has a ton of likes, ton of comments, ton of engagement, a bunch of new subs, and we're already halfway um, to 900 subs, right? Like almost 860 subs. So shout out to you guys for that. Uh, the support continues to be crazy, and maybe we can hit that 1K goal faster than we thought. Um, but if you guys enjoy this one, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, going to be getting to a bunch of fun stuff, doing New Year's resolutions. Maybe you guys can drop yours down in the comments. But before we get into the news, Brock, how you doing today? Oh, we're doing just mighty fine on Monday. Didn't have to work today, which is positive as always. And happy New Year, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got we got some New Year's resolutions. Maybe some some positive ones. Some teams maybe only have to clean up one little thing for the rest of the year, and some teams are already in like blow it up mode. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that. Some things might not be as serious. Something might be like a random little goal you want the team to set for the year. And who knows? We kind of both just had like our own freedom to do whatever we wanted with it and just like roll with it with pretty loose restrictions. So we'll see how it goes. Kyle and I did something pretty similar to this last year. I thought it was a good segment and, and fits with the time. So we'll do it. Um, First news we have, it's pretty much all like little roster news nothing major and all stuff that's been talked about pretty extensively over the last week so we don't want to spend too much time uh maybe make this a little shorter episode and just focus on uh those new year's res uh, resolutions more but first thing rumored lag roster that kind of goes hand in hand with optic news um as of now is arcity's assault exceed and joe deceives um kind of an interesting one brock <laughs> it's that is very interesting two main ars on the same team and like especially RCDs can speed it up as a main, but Assault is a very, very, very slow main. Yeah. He plays extremely slow. Like one of the slower, more he's like the mold of the traditional old school main AR, like very slow, holding lanes, holding headies, anchoring spawns. Like he is he is like if you think of a traditional old school AR, assault is that. Yeah, definitely. Like usually if you're gonna have two main ARs on a team, you want them to play at like the speed of like what New York's playing at right now with like pre sun skies. I know obviously not really two main ARs, but like the speed they're playing at is what you'd want those guys to be playing at. You don't want two super slow ARs. It looks like RC's going to have to step it up. A little yeah, bit of high he, knees. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to get get the pace going, but I think that's got to be a nightmare for him because like every time he gets on these teams and he randomly is like forced to flex, he hates it. Mm -hmm. He just wants to play main AR, and I mean, I guess technically they might be saying he's the main, but like Assault's probably going to slow down a lot and RC's going to have to speed up, and then he's basically not going to be a main anymore. Yeah, it'd be a um, flex. I will say I'm like I am intrigued with like the sub duo on this team though. Like mm -hmm. Joe Deceives, I believe, just turned 18 and everybody's been really, really praising him and the LAG yeah. Academy team won the Challengers event and everybody's saying they're the best challengers team. Joe Deceives is like next up. So I am excited to see him get a chance because maybe they can find a, a building block with him. Who yeah, knows he could be the next simp? Yeah, and exceed the player I was gonna compare him to is Kismet. Yes. Yeah. Like he plays pretty fast. He's willing to do all the dirty work. He won Challenger Champs MVP last year. I know Kismet did, didn't do that, but he won MVP of Challenger Champs. He has been in the league before, and that's kind of the reason I compare him to Kismet. It's like he was in the league for a little bit with a rocker at like Champs and MW and was a sub and like performed pretty well. I remember at BO4 Champs, he played with like Tommy and Chino, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. On like Sicario, and they finished like top 12, like a pretty solid finish for a, an AM team. Yeah. And, like, he's had stints where he's been really successful, looked really good in challengers, but people maybe pass on him because he's a little older, a little bit more mm -hmm. of a vet than he's not, like, an 18, 19-year-old. So I'm intrigued to see. I think I think Exceed and Joe Deceives have a chance to be a decent sub duo. I think people are writing this team off more because of Exceed or Assault, mm -hmm. like, having the two main ARs. But I'm, I'm very intrigued, I will say, to see this sub duo. I, I think that they could maybe find one or two building blocks in those two players. And this team could... I don't think they're going to be any anything special, but I think they could be better than the old LAG um, and maybe turn some heads and be a little more competitive. 
Yeah, it really can't get much worse than the old LAG, LAG exactly. team. Exactly. <laughs> so, and, like, if they're going to suck... New- yeah, they're going to suck. I'd rather see two young, talented players get in the lineup and see if they could become like mainstay players. Yeah, at least they're trying to switch it up, not just stay with try it again. Yeah. Um, kind of going hand in hand with this roster, though, goes to Optic because obviously RCDs was rumored to be going there. Now he's kind of stuck on that roster, and all three of his teammates, the trio that he came to play with, uh, Hook, Neptune, and Spart, don't make it onto that roster unless something changes. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, people are talking about the possibility of adding Hook for Dashy onto Optic, which would make sense because um, I believe Neptune and Sparta are both listed on the LAG Academy roster, and Hook isn't, which, I mean, if they're benching Hook, that wouldn't make any sense. Why wouldn't he be on the Academy roster? Yeah. So that led to a lot of speculation of Hook subbing in for Dashy. Um, Dashy's been hinting that he may be on the bench and not even on another team. Obviously, I didn't even think of this at first. Like I thought about like the ZO, XEO, um, mm-hmm. like the Shotzi Illy ties, obviously, with Hook is there, but I didn't even think about this because, like, I don't know why, I'm just dumb, I guess, but I completely forgot, like, obviously Envy is involved with Optic now, and, like, Hook was on Envy for how many years with Astro in that relationship? I, like, completely blanked on that. Yeah. So, you never know, Hook might spark a different, you know, team to Optic. I mean, if he does go there. If he ends up going there, I, I, I like the roster, because we, t- we just talked about it last week before, it was even, like, a rumor of Hook to Optic, it's like, He's one of those players. Like when we were doing when we were doing our tier list, we talked about how weird it felt to put him so low. Yeah, but like we said, he's one of the few players that has the ability to be an S tier. Like there aren't that many players that have a gear that they can hit that puts him in S tier. But Hook is one of them. Mm-hmm. He can be an S tier player. We know he has that talent. It's just a matter of consistency for him. He's yeah, doing it every day. Maybe not so much. But and like, I think he could bring something big because like I was actually watching Zuma stream today. Um. I saw he was like doing like the Reddit read, so I just threw it on in my um, AirPods while I was working and just like listening to Zuma. And he said something about like he saw Hook uh, at Raleigh and like he was just walking down the street, just vibing. And he talked to him and he was asking him how he liked the game. And he said he was like the only player that was positive about the game and had like a really good mindset to grind and like just be positive about it. Which I feel like Optic could use somebody vibey like that that could just like bring some some positive mindset to the team, maybe some motivation. Yeah, definitely. He really wants to get on and play. Yeah. I, I want him on my team, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, and I I feel pretty confident spawning into the map with Hook because we know when he's at his peak, he can be he can be a literal MVP level player at his peak. Yeah, he can be the best, which hopefully see it. I don't know. I, I guess we'll leave it for now because we don't know. Maybe Hook isn't going there. Uh it's just a rumor at this point when we hit record, although people keep thinking it's getting closer because he did tweet something about like um See if I can find it again quick. You know what? You remember what he tweeted? It was like something like. Mm. It was weird. It was like, I think Jacob Hale like has a screenshot of it. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, he like okay. So on December thirtieth, twenty nineteen, right as we were getting into twenty twenty, Hook tweeted, "Create your own luck and bet on yourself." Twenty twenty vibes with a money bag emoji. Um, then he quoted it today and said, "It's that time again. Double down." Mm-hmm. But then he deleted it. People were like, "Was did he delete it? Because he was leaking an optic announcement." And obviously, um, obviously, like they don't optic doesn't like announcement leaks. Like they like to do things in their own time. So people were thinking that could be the case. But we'll see. Maybe it'll be announced soon. I mean, kind of has to be. We're about less than ten days away from the next set of matches. <laughs> yeah, for real. And so optic start. has to have a roster. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Rambo coming in. Friday. Yeah, Rambo's going to come in and sub in, I guess. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. Because, I mean, Optic... Oh, they don't play on Friday. Never mind. They don't play actually till Sunday. So maybe maybe they'll wait until the weekend. They don't play in, until Sunday against the Breach. Yeah, maybe. Their only match of the weekend. Try to prolong it. Get the hype around it. Yeah. Um. Then, the last thing we have before we just jump into our, our other segment and get into that is Nasty. Um, the tweet was from a while ago but he was having a visa issue that i don't know if it was allowing maybe he went home for the holidays or something and it wasn't Probably. allowing him to get back um back into the states i think so they were saying he wasn't able to practice they thought the estimated date where they'd be able to practice again was uh january 2nd so that would be today when we're recording this so i don't know i haven't heard anything further if that's still the case but man london and visa issues it's that's a duo it's a big duo just a <laughs> cold work him, London and Trey. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> Zero couldn't get back in the U.S. for the entire season he couldn't play. Yeah, he's just 
playing challengers in Europe. Which it's so weird that this keeps happening to them. I know the visa process is like I mean, I shouldn't say I know. I don't know that much about the visa sure. process, but I know from what everybody says it's long, it's painful, it's difficult to get done. Mm-hmm. But like man, it's just like it's very unfortunate that they can't get it done because like also for nasty that's got to be like so stressful and annoying like not only is your team struggling you've got to worry about trying to get better but like you're dealing with all this stuff to you're not even sure if you can get back into the country and play with your team that's probably stressing them out and maybe cause them to play worse because yeah it seems like yeah. a stressful situation definitely just you got so that's much on his mind can't focus on the game and I hope this doesn't affect him like it does, like it did to Zero, where all of a sudden he's like stuck out of the country for the year and has to get benched and can't play. Like we saw it kill one career from London already when it happened to Alex. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was yeah. a visa issue, but like I know he had like some personal issue and he had to step away and he already wasn't playing that well. And then he like basically got thrown back into the mix and he played really poorly when he came back. And then we haven't seen him even close to the league since. Yeah, I think that's more of that problem. Yeah, so like that kind of killed him. But now all of a sudden. Like, if I think Nasty's a very good, very talented player, but he hasn't performed crazy well to like have a spot locked up. So now all of a sudden, if he gets um, booted to the bench or, or forced to be on the bench and he has to sit out a while, I'm a little scared for his CDL future, which I don't think I should be because I do think he's a very talented player. So hopefully he gets that sorted out so we could be right back playing and we don't see him yeah, he, hit the bench at all. He definitely deserves to be in the league. Yeah, because he's a very good player. Yeah. All right, Brock, you ready to do New Year's resolutions? That's all we got for news. Ooh, yeah. I knew it'd be a little shorter for news, but we're going to do do New Year's resolutions. I have them basically in alphabetical order. Maybe we'll just go down and do it that way so that it keeps it in a decent order from like, as funny as it sounds, it kind of goes from bad to good to like a decent mix. Like it's not all the good teams on top and bad teams on bottom. It's a pretty good mix. Okay. Yeah. So we'll go Mine through with that. Over the place, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll go through with that. Basically like, the The premise of this segment is pretty simple. We we're basically talking about what we wanted to do today because don't have any predictions to make and not a lot of news. And we we're just like, yeah, it's New Year's, New Year's Eve just was here. New Year's just came. Let's do some New Year's resolutions. Big thing that everybody likes to do. It's kind of a a meme on, <clears throat> excuse me, a meme on Twitter every year. Um, yep. Like people are joking, how long is your New Year's resolution going to last this year? Two days. Um, but we're just going to come up with basically something so general like it could be you want to have them unlock this player or you need to see them do this or improve in this specific thing or like maybe consider making that roster change or like basically the the most general thing like basically a goal for that team to set um for the remainder of this season as we head into the new year so let's start brock with atlanta phase going uh alphabetical um by city basically or roughly i kind of have them in order here so atlanta they're first what you got for Atlanta to use resolution? This is obviously um, it. to be different than some teams because they're already pretty solid. For me, I just said for Atlanta, just keep grinding the game together since last year is pretty different leadership wise from Alec. And yeah. honestly, they don't need to change much, to be honest. Yeah, I actually have something pretty similar, just maybe with like slightly different conditions. I said just stick with what you have. Don't be tempted by dashy or other shiny things that might be lying around as the scraps from like the first set of roster mania. Cause it sounds like dashy is going to be technically available. Like if they were to want to have a big buyout, um, mm-hmm. but I don't want them to get tempted by like random other players. They could pick up. I want them to just stick with what they have and keep grinding out. Cause like you said, we saw a pretty big improvement. Their search and destroy was really the thing that killed them last year. They were so inconsistent. And their yeah. search was like pretty good in this event and showed signs of life, and that's probably due to Slasher being such a good SD player. I think he finished last season with the number one SD KD. Yeah, um, Slasher I'll begin the first bloods. Yeah, and like great search and destroy player. So I just want him to just stick with what you got. Don't be tempted by like like I said, namely Dashy or other things. Mm-hmm. Although people might think Dashy's a better player than Slasher, but like I think Face has a chance to be really special to this team because I think. Slasher is like a very similar player to RCDs, but like you said, very different leadership style, so it might take a little bit of time, but I think Slasher's level of talent on this team could be right back into Dynasty territory, so I want them to just stick mm-hmm. it out and, and keep grinding because I know they didn't get a, a, a finals appearance, which is basically for this team, if they don't make the finals, it's considered a failure because of how good they are. That's crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah, so don't get tempted. Stick with what you got. I think it's going to work, and still the team that I have my eye on to win champs if they stick it together, so just yeah. stick it out. Would be very interesting if they got dashy. <laughs> yeah, in terms of talent, they probably go up, but like, 
I don't know. I don't know if Dashie's not really a leader, talent is leadership enough. person. Huh? Yeah, I don't know if his talent's enough over Slasher to like make them better. But at the same time, those four players would just be so good that like sometimes how good their team it would almost be like the Optic Dynasty mm-hmm. during the Jetpack era. Like sometimes the teamwork didn't even matter because they were just so much better than everyone else at times that like so, so much more skilled. <laughs> yeah, like it didn't matter. So that could be a situation with Dashie. But I don't want him to do it. I want him to stick with this roster how they have it. Yep, I agree. All right, Boston. I'll go first for this one. My yep. New Year's resolution for Boston. I want to see him speed up the pace. Um, mimic New York style. That's what I think mm-hmm. their goal should be for the year. Speed up their pace because I, I view their team as like somewhat similar to New York in terms of like the caliber of players. Um, I think New York's is a little bit higher, obviously, but I do think like Zinni and Skies are somewhat comparable. They're both pretty heavy, uh, slower ARs at times with pretty high KDs and get, you know, get, the, get their kills, but I think they could both speed up. Um, I think Priesta and Awakening can be pretty similar, and Awakening maybe even has higher slaying upside. They could speed it up. Those two yeah. ARs could play a little faster. And then you've got Vivid. We know he's got the go button. He'll always be going, and I mean, I think him and Nero could speed up the pace and play at a pace like a Kismet and Hydra and just, like, basically do what New York was doing, where they were just so fast and so decisive. I feel like Boston has the slaying upside and the players that can play that fast. Um, because all, all three of them can play very fast, apart from maybe Zinni. Awakening does play kind of slow at times, but that's what I wanted to see him do. I want to see him speed up, because I do feel like like this team has the makeup to be really good, and I've kind of been on, on their side this whole offseason. But I feel like if they try to play this like traditional COD and like Zinni maybe normally wants to, it might not bode well for them. They just need to hit that go button like New York. Yeah, but if they just copy the game plan of New York, put yeah, it there. run at people. <laughs> Yeah, uh, even though Zenny doesn't like to run like that fast at people. <laughs> yeah, but like you got, I mean, you've got Vivid. Like, only Vivid, other player yeah. that can match his speed is a BZ, basically. Like, yeah, Vivid plays at a ridiculous speed. So, like, you've got the guy on the front line to open it up for you. Now, everybody just got to match his pace. That's basically what I want. I don't want him to just go to complete chaos, obviously. Like, you got to have some organization, but I want to see them just speed it up and see what happens. Yeah. Um, for what I have for Boston is really, I said, if they want to really be a contender and win a major this year, everyone's got to play good at the same time like New York in their last major. And the teamwork for them has got to be the difference maker for them. Because, you know, they're not the most talented, but their teamwork is really good and they run real fast. They might just win it like New York. <laughs> so just hone in the teamwork and really just work on consistency. Yeah. I mean, that is fair too. That That's like something that I feel like that comes through practice too. Like just learning how everybody like the teamwork aspect learning how everybody wants to play because like that's half the battle is like you like learning where your teammates like to go on the map and like what are their hot spots kind of like like in basketball like you you might know like your teammate really likes to shoot for this area on the floor but doesn't mm-hmm. like this area so you try to set them up in that area kind of the same thing like maybe nero really likes to go to this area on the map so like zinni holds down a lane to allow him to get there and just roam yeah yeah i agree with that i think we're kind of on the same page with the first two. Mm-hmm. All right, we are kind of going to maybe a little bottom beater. Maybe they got a little bit more extreme um, goal, or maybe you just want to see something for their future. You got Florida next. What you got for Florida? Ooh. Florida, Florida, Florida. Well, Major could be playing a lot better. Than... Yeah. Vickle could be playing better if they... I, I say play around Vickle a little bit more. I think, he, I think he's pretty good, pretty good talent-wise. And let have yeah. havoc do his thing and search and all that. And honestly, I said play overall, just play better as a team and get better at work every day. I it's kind of weird. We have a pretty the second half of your answer. I didn't really include that because I just don't think Florida has much of a chance to do anything this year. But our answer is pretty similar on this one as well because I said establish Vickle as your franchise player. Like really, really explore your options. Try to do everything you can to set him up, and also kind of explore if Brack can be his duo. Mm-hmm. Rex, like an AR flex player for the future. Vickle's obviously a sub. Like, focus in on Vickle being your franchise player. Maybe see if Brack can be his duo. Because I would say Major Maniac and Havoc are kind of placeholders. Yeah, for now. They're not, they're not really players that, like, you're expecting to be on your roster for the next four plus years. But, like, Vickle's a young, talented SMG that does all the dirty work. Like, he is a player you could see potentially being your franchise player and be on your roster for multiple years. Same with Brack. Like, a bit of a younger player, um, obviously been around the scene for a while, but like a little more untapped. You could maybe make him like one of your franchise players, kind of like they did with um, Skies and Awakening. Yep. Maybe explore if this could be your new duo. 
try to just set those guys up the best you can to just see if they have the talent, the ability, and the personality to do that. Because Major Maniac and Havoc are solid players, but they're probably not here for the the long haul four plus year potential like the other two could be. Yeah, they're here for the year. And see ya. Get some good and, new players in one likely. Yeah. <laughs> Move on to be their next placeholder, pretty much. Yeah. But All I right. do think I do think Brad could he could probably be he put he exceeded my expectation at the major, so I think he'll do be just fine. Yeah, that's that's kind of why I had like I want to see them establish Vickel as their franchise player because like I do feel like he is like the guy that they were looking for to do that. But like that's why yeah. I kind of snuck in there like explore maybe if Brack can be his duo because Brack did look very good at the major, mm-hmm. especially like when push came to shove in that optic series. He looked very good down the stretch of the second optic series when they won. Yeah, he really right. stepped it up. Mm-hmm. Might might just have something there. Yeah. Okay, London Royal Ravens, another one of those more bottom feeder teams. They're next. Um, for them, I basically said right away, just be open to roster changes because I do think that they have like the base of good players, but they just need a little bit more. Like I think zero and ASIM is a pretty good duo because I think it gives you good communications on both fronts. Like you have a really well, um, really well versed in good events. communications. Yeah. You have great communications on your main AR with zero and you have mm-hmm. great comms out of your main sub in ASIM. And I really like nasty as well. I just. Obviously, the whole Paul situation, I don't know if Scraps is the answer, and I like that they're already open to roster changes because that's supposed to be happening, but like, if Scraps doesn't work right away, be open to make another change because I think the Zero Nasty Asim trio actually has a chance to like compete for a spot at Champs if they have a good fourth, and maybe that's Scraps, so maybe they don't have to be open, but like, be open to try to make a deal for like Wardy or something. Yeah, de- definitely. Another EU player like that. That's basically what I went with for them. Yeah. I basically said, you know, let Nasty cook, play around him. Mm-hmm. I like and, that one. I, I that was one of the my options I was maybe thinking about. Yeah, I don't know. I don't honestly. I don't think Scraps would be be it for like long term at all. But like you said, then you find someone else probably for Scraps eventually. Right, just have him for the major. Yeah, it just... let's see fries. It all depends because I just like I don't understand. Like I know Scraps had like pretty bad thoughts on the London organization. I thought after his time there, like I don't think he was a fan. And then basically, it's out of the league for a year. Doesn't really play challengers much. And all of a sudden, he's back as a sub with the org that I thought he didn't like. And now he's starting again after like nothing. It just seems so weird. But like we do know that Scraps can play at a high level. Mm-hmm. So I'm not like completely ruling out that he could be good. But usually, when we see players take a break of like a year plus, it doesn't typically work out that well when they come back but who knows scraps is very talented he could he could change that he does have history playing with like zero so yep he does and technically and, asim <laughs> yeah and asim black ops 4 all on the same team yep now granted the other two players on the team were zuma and stellium i think of them a little bit higher than nasty uh, yeah <laughs> but i that's why i say like the building blocks of this team are there like i more than florida i could see this team like sneaking their way to like a seventh or eighth spot at champs and being competitive. Like I do think they have a chance to do that. So I don't want them to completely blow it up, but they got to be very open to changes if they want any chance to make it to champs. Like if it's not working, you got to make a change fast. Yep. I agree. Like, I don't see them making up a lot of points. over like winning an event later or something. I think it's going to be, a, they're going to have to have a lot of consistent top six finishes to just like gather up points like that. Yeah. Uh, I would say so too. Okay. LAG. Um, we went from, you know, two bottom feeders to like the current bottom feeder. Like this is this is the bottom of the barrel team right here. LAG, what you got for them? Your your boys to start the year, you were predicting them to, to do big things and now the whole roster's blown up. So much pain and suffering. Free <laughs> Alec. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I said clean house, start, get a new roster, keep Alec. Let's go from there, because honestly, you can't get much worse than it has been. Yeah. I'm I'm in a similar boat. I said their resolution, their goal should be just explore all options, exhaust all options from your academy team to find out if there are any building blocks with there, but also be patient with them. Like, I don't think assault's going to be an answer because, like, that would require them to probably get rid of RCDs, and I'll take RCDs over assault all day. Uh, Yeah. But, like, Joe to see is supposed to be super talented. Exceed, I think, could be a player. Um, God, who else is on the LAG academy team? Can't think of a player uh, on there. Mm. They had who's the who's the last player? It was Assault. 
exceed Joe deceives, and I I'm just blanking on who the last player was. I can't think of it. Last oh player. That's bad. Well, somebody will be roasting us in the comments because I just I literally can't remember who it is. I honestly I couldn't why. even tell you the the name or the letter. That's why I wrote the name. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm just completely drawing a blank on it. But maybe I'll, I'll find it here in a second. But anyways, with LAG, I want them to be a little patient. Though. Like if Joe deceives and exceeds struggle right away, like don't just go to the next option. Like let let him play a little bit because like let's be honest, your season's probably chalked anyways. No no group you bring in is gonna like make them amazing. Uh, unless maybe this first group does or something. But like if they struggle right away, don't just like jump to the next option. Like be ready to explore all other options you have in challengers just to try to find a building block. But like who knows? If you come out of the season like and you have two franchise players out of it, even though you didn't make champs because you you did experiments, you found them in challengers, maybe you can finally get out of this carousel of new roster every year that doesn't work that LAG's been in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Give give them time if they play bad. <laughs> essentially like that's that's what i want to see like i don't i don't want to see the instant roster change because like really even if they make a bunch of roster changes do we really think they're going to get to the top no they probably won't get top players anyways so might be tough for them yeah oh that's the last player was it was diamond con oh diamond con on lag academy yeah that was their other player i couldn't think of he's a decent player yeah and had a pretty successful stint with Subliners in Cold War, like pretty good player in the pro league. Yeah. So even he, you could even work him in if things aren't working later on. You could eventually work him in and try him out, see if he can be a building block. Mm -hmm. Who knows? All right. The other LA team, the Thieves, kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. They're the defending world champs. Uh, for them, I said just don't break up if turmoil occurs. Like last year. They could have broken up, honestly, early in the year because like they were struggling. They it had the one stage bad. where they went 0-5 in qualifiers. It was not good. Everything looked super negative, and then they made the switch to Kenny at sub. And even then, they didn't see instant results. They still didn't look like amazing after that switch. They looked improved, but not amazing. I don't want them to break up turmoil occurs. Like It's a pretty historic thing in COD that most times after a team wins champs, they don't make it through the next year completely. Mm -hmm. I've only seen it like a few times, like um, Cold War to Vanguard. We saw it. Uh, with phase and then the the last one i really think of is like bo3 to iw we saw envy stick together and like that's yeah. kind of the example i was going off on this one is that that team that envy team won bo3 champs look like the clear best team in the game and they were not good in iw for a very long time then they finished second and second at the last two events yeah made grand finals they're like the first complete team to ever like make back-to-back -back grand finals at champs uh that I can think of at least, and like they were like the one team to stick it out at that time. So good things can happen if you stick it out. Your team is very close, and you have that edge over everyone of how close and how long you've been together. So don't break it up if turmoil occurs. Just stick it out, LAT. Mm -hmm. I, I basically have. That's everyone. Everyone plays a little bit better. Championship caliber team, because you know, and, and also think most of these players I think get better as the game goes on. Yeah. S specifically for me, Kenny and Octane. Yeah. And, and Draz is like, you know, Draz, I have a bad series here and there, but overall, he's usually pretty like 0.95 around there. Pretty, pretty good for your flex. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, like you said, this team is extremely talented, and it's like they might, like, after you've been together for a while, like, you always think about, like, oh, what if we had this guy? Or, like, you might start to think about that, but like, yeah. There's a reason you won back to back events and were able to win champs. Like obviously this roster has can hit a ceiling that not many teams can hit because not that many people win champs. <laughs> mm -hmm, definitely. Like I don't want to see them make any kind of move. They can unless like obviously year. like unless obviously they go like on like a Paris type stretch where they can't win a match, then maybe you yeah. gotta reevaluate it. But like as long as you're basically not blowing up, then that makes sense to me to just keep it all together. Yep. For now until they go and can't win nothing, can't win a map. <laughs> yeah. It's got to get, like, so, so, so bad that, like, you have to make a change, pretty much. Yeah. I don't think they go 0-5 in qualifiers, or how many games you ever play in the qualifiers. I don't think they'll make a change even then. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right. super bad. <laughs> yeah. We got Rocker next. What you got for Rocker? Ooh. Rocker, Rocker. I said... I actually don't think they need to change anything at the moment since, you know, 
pretty, all pretty new to each other. Catch on the first time many are. And just keep playing together, grinding the game together. And then you'll look at better. Unless people don't like the game, then it's shocked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I have something pretty similar. I said kind of like um, you did earlier to play around Nasty. I want the team to just play behind Afro, play around him, set him up on the map, make him your superstar player. Mm -hmm. Set up Afro to do that because I do feel like if Afro set up for that and, and the sub is dominating, that's going to open up the lanes for Cami to also dominate, which I've said it all along. I think this team can be a championship winning team. I think, I think in our preseason predictions, I picked them as one of the teams to win a major um, because I had so much faith in them. But like those two have got to be a superstar duo if they want to win. Yep. So you've got to continue to play behind Afro and Cami and unlock them both, make them your superstar players because like this team reminds me a lot of Ultra. Obviously, they have half the Ultra team, so that makes sense. But like Ultra of the past couple of years, and specifically um, Cold War, mm -hmm. where like they were just like so good once the middle of the year hit that like there was a stretch there where like people were thinking Ultra were the best team in the game for a few weeks before Phase started winning the events again. Yeah, there was like a solid month plus after Ultra won Major Two, where like everybody's like they're the best team in the game, and that was mostly due to that teamwork. I think this team needs to just gel, get their teamwork. Continue to try to set up their two superstars to be superstars. Yeah, they're so good together. Yeah, and like I feel like this team could get to that same spot too. Like their teamwork could be so good, and it's going to take time because like it's Attach hasn't really played with any of these players. Afro hasn't really played with any of them, and then you've got the duel that's played together. So it's going to take time, but yeah, talent certainly there. This is another team that I would be very, very, very sad if they somehow broke up and didn't stick together for the year. Yeah, I. I don't think they should at all. <laughs> yeah. NYSL's next, Brock. This one, to me, is pretty simple. They're obviously the undisputed best team in the game right now because they were pretty dominant at Major 1 and they're the defending champs. For them, it's pretty simple to me. I said, keep your foot in the gas. you got to stay motivated heading into the new year. You're the best team in the game. Don't let Valorant get to you. Don't let Skies and yep. <laughs> Hydra start playing up till 3 a.m. and playing Val. Uh, like we heard about last season, like basically you just got to keep your foot in the gas. Don't get complacent, as we see so many teams do over and over and over again. Somehow, after winning an early major, like you can't yeah, just think that this means you're the best. You got to continue to work so you can stay on top. Yeah, that let off the gas a little bit, and then who knows? Top six, here it goes. No, and everybody catches up to you. <laughs> yep, I bet you the team bark needs to be still flowing like usual and fry as they were in major one. Yeah, just got to keep up that consistency really is what it comes down to. There's there's really not else, like not much else you can put on them because like they were, it's not like they had like a kind of fluky or tight win. Like they were pretty clearly the best team in the game. Yeah, they were, they're running, gunning and winning. Yeah, and it's, it, to me, it's the classic, like it'd probably be the same goal for every team that wins a major one is don't get complacent because I mean, it's the story is all this time. How often do we see a team win the first major and then never win again or win the first major and look really bad the next couple? Mm -hmm. Always happens because people just maybe get a little complacent or you're like, yeah, we're at the top and then everybody just is working catch up to you and maybe you're not working as hard as you were to get to the top. Yeah, definitely. Gotta stay Champion motivated. Championship fatigue, but for the major one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. Then we got the team that everybody wants us to talk about. We've got Optic. Ooh. Oh boy. What you got for Optic? Optic. Well, they need to make a change since they try to get rid of Dash and Illy both times. You know, yeah. Can't, can't have him back it again for the third time. Third I think Illy might be back, charm. though. Oh, Illy's back? Definitely. I think he might be. Because the sounds of it is if who comes on, it's for Dashy. I mean, I guess that's a little different playing with the XEL again, I guess. Such a weird roster, though. Like, is Illy the main? Is Scump the main? I said I would probably put Scump to the main. And let be interesting. Three. Yeah. Real interesting. All right, go Finally, ahead. What were you going to say? I, I said need, need a change. Maybe, maybe who comes in, helps the team, you know, dominate like it's been, like they used to be able to. Scump to the main, possibly? Because I, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Illy's like a main. I think it's more like a flex. Yeah, I feel like he could be a main. But, like, no, there's no clear main on the team if Dashy leaves. Even Dashy doesn't feel like he should. Dashy is a main, but he feels like every time I see him, he should be playing flex. Oh, he, so he's, he's, like, he's like me. I always joke when we play. Like, I want to be the main. Yeah. But when it actually comes to the game, I don't want to be the main. 
yeah. I just, yeah, it, it's a weird situation. I have something kind of similar because obviously we know they're going to make a change or they pretty much have to make a change. But I put, you got to go all in for Scump's final year. Like, you're having the most storied and pretty much historic player in CDL, CWL, Call of Duty competitive history. Yep. Playing in his final year, you can't just do something kind of like some half measure, try to compete. You've got to go all in for his final year because the main reason I said that is the replacement for him is not going to be as hard to find as you think. And that's not saying in like a way where I think Scum's replaceable because he's basically an irreplaceable player. Like he's the most popular player. He's also extremely good. Um, carries the league on his back. Everybody knows that with his followers and like yep. the amount of viewership he brings. But I'm saying in terms of like suitors, like you're not going to have a lack of suitors that want to replace Scump. Everyone's going to be flopping, flopping yeah. to the optic for the spot. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean by that. Scump is obviously irreplaceable. He's not easy to replace at all. But what I mean by the replacement won't be as hard to find as you think in game. Not maybe not out of game because of Scump's following, but in game it won't be as hard as you think because every player will line up for that opportunity pretty much. So mm-hmm. Like you're gonna have your pick of every player where Scump is an incredible player, but like sometimes like if a team like Seattle lost Pred, that's an impossible player to replace. Yeah, because Seattle done. doesn't have the pull. Like they don't have the pull to just get another Pred because Pred is arguably the best player in the world or maybe the best talent in the world right now. Mm-hmm. So like. Seattle doesn't have the pull as an organization just be like, okay, we'll grab the next Pred, where like Scump, incredible player, obviously the top tier personality in the CDL, but like if he retires, Optic will have everybody lining up. You could have everybody from Pred to Simp to Abizi to, I mean, Shotzi staying to Selium. like all these players are going to line up to play for Optic, so like you might as well go all in this year and just put together a roster that you think you, uh, can win and then worry about Scump's replacement when the offseason hits because it's not like there's going to be a lack of people that want to take over for Scump. Yeah, for everyone's gonna want that, even if they are on a good team right now. <laughs> You're not gonna struggle to find anyone. That's basically what I'm saying. So just go all in and then worry about replacing Scump later. Go all in, pay whatever bet you gotta pay to get some players. Hopefully, maybe try to win a championship for his last run. Yeah, because I mean, we all know everybody. I mean, maybe there's a couple players that don't want to play for Optic, but I, I can't imagine a situation where a player would turn down an Optic offer because I mean, it's a, it's a career changer for these players. You can get onto that team and get your popularity up. Um, while also, like, it's not like you're going to have bad teams. Optic's always a competitive team. Mm-hmm. But also, like, if you become a top-tier player on Optic, your career is literally set. You can basically have the avenue to walk right into content after, and you're never going to have to work. Um, Go back into, the like, the real workforce. Basically, you're going to have that nice content job if you can play very well under Optic and represent the brand well. It really is life-changing. Yeah, it's the place to be. It's it's, it's the life-changing org to play for, along with, like, maybe Thieves and Phase if you can really set yourself up, but Optic's obviously... The clear yeah. life changer type org. Yep. All right. Then we've got Surge. Only what? Them and two more teams left after that? Yeah. Surge, Ultra, and Vegas. Seattle Surge. Um, I'll just say mine pretty quick because I think it's simple. Get off the Pine Park and do everything you can to keep Sib and Pred. I get that it might be a money issue of keeping Pred, but like you got to do everything you can to keep these two. And in my opinion, if you have another bad, uh, like showing, I guess they didn't have a bad showing at the major. I guess they did finish top two, but in terms of like the qualifiers, if they if they struggle again and go to their typical surge thing from Vanguard where they go from second to twelfth, mm-hmm. we gotta see like a, a push to maybe bring on Arsties. Uh or to hound optic for Dashy if he's on the bench. Like you gotta make an extreme push to replace accuracy and go all in because if Pred is an unrestricted free agent this year and Sib is I got to believe they're probably going to go somewhere else because they're going to have offers from everyone. Sib to face seems like a legit possibility if things don't work out. Mm-hmm. Red to optic seems like a legit possibility to replace Scump. Like, you've got to go all in, do everything you can to keep these two for this year, keep them in place, and potentially replace accuracy if things don't work out. Because, like, I don't know if you agree, but I don't know if the, the Surge organization is ever going to have a chance to have a duo this talented again on their roster. No, they definitely won't. I think Shaq and Kobe. Yeah, that's not even just like against the surge. There's not going to be many organizations in the entire CDL that are going to get a duo this talented to stay on their team for more than one year. Yeah, they work so well together, too. It's just they're so good. And am I getting outbidded? <laughs> yeah, like they just might, yeah, might come down to money and they might get outbid and say see you later. But I mean, it's going to be hard to ever get a duo as good as these two. I think everybody would pretty much agree with that. I don't think there's anybody that would say that seven pred aren't like top tier players some of the the best players in the game yeah 
Um, from I basically had similar stuff to what you said. I said let the Kobe Shack, you know, keep frying if they want to win, and we we need to see more from Mac and accuracy if they want to actually be a legit contender. Yeah, find some balance is basically yours then, huh? Yeah, find some balance. Fix the search, aka accuracy. We'll fix that hopefully, and go yeah. from there. Like, I mean, we expect like what would you say? We expect. Sib and Pred to be the two best players on the team basically at all times at Fry, but like it can't be 1.4 is from those two and 0.6 is from the other two. Yeah. I you just... got to find a way to make it maybe 1.2s for Sib and Pred and 1.1s for Sib and Pred, but Mac and Accuracy are the 0.9 to 1 range. Like you got to find a way to even things out. Yeah. Can't be just pure dominance from those two because like it will win you some maps in some series, but when it comes down to it and you're playing very good teams like they played in New York or when you're playing a phase, all four players are going to have to contribute. You can't just. Rely on two guys at all times. Yeah, I can't have a bad map. Change the yeah. series. Like the two guys can beat bad teams, but when you play another top tier team, if two of your players just aren't contributing what they need to, you're just not going to win. Yeah, it's very hard to do. Because teams like FaZe are not going to have two players not contributing. They're going to be pretty well rounded. Same with New York, guys like that. Yep, definitely. And maybe uh, get a little bake for Sip and Pred. Early, <laughs> find a way to just get every little bit of money you can to keep those two around. Yeah, make them sign a contract, something. Yeah, uh, stay gone. Yeah, I think Pred to Optic is. I would be if as long as Pred's an unrestricted free agent. I guess technically we don't know what his contract looks like, but I would assume he is because this would be his second year. As long as Pred's an unrestricted free agent, I would bet a lot of money that he ends on Optic next year. I would be. Yeah, I'm very. I'll say I would be shocked. That would like if if Pred doesn't end up on Optic unless like some for some reason maybe Scump doesn't retire and they're running it back with whatever roster they have like at the end of the year like he changes his mind or something maybe not but like I would be dumbfounded if Pred isn't Shotzi sub duo on Optic to start the season next year. Yeah, definitely. And if you know Pred leaves, Sib's leaving too. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Yeah. All right, our second to last team, Ultra. We ended with a couple teams, Surge and Ultra, that I just like. Love to watch play. We've got Ultra. What you got for them? Ultra. Um, I honestly didn't have too much. They're they're, they're pretty. What finished third? Fourth? Yeah, third. Fourth. And at times look like the best best team in the game. No, yeah, they finished fourth. Fourth. Yeah, they like, at times look like the best. Let Scrappy do his thing. You know, have Standy be the route man for the team. In, inside, you know, clutch up, search and destroy. You got it. Clinics would do his yeah. thing too. Yeah. Be the front runner. Yeah, I said for me, I said invest all your resources into this year. Make that midseason pickup like Thieves did with Shane. If you feel like you're lacking in one game mode and could use some help. <laughs> Hire that extra analyst uh, to help you with one little thing. Like don't try to cheap out and save some money on some salary you could pay to help your team out with an analyst or a coach or like some random help. Like invest it all because we see insight having in, you know, another seemingly good year like he's going to have it looks like kleenex is going to have another good year these guys have been dominant for so long that at some point you feel like they're going to maybe start to just like fall off a little bit like not like they're just going to become bad players all of a sudden but like they're not gonna be able to continue this dominance forever and the same thing i think goes with scrappy he looks like he's on pace to have one of those insane dominant rookie seasons we see every once in a while and sometimes those can be short-lived because it's so hard to stay that good for a while and standy looks like he's having a great year like this team looks like I would say if you were to give me like here's pick three teams you think will be the final three, Toronto's probably right up there. They'll probably yeah. be one of the teams I would say is gonna be in the final three along with like maybe like FaZe in New York as of right now. Yeah. I for that final that. weekend. Like I just think they have to go absolutely all in because I do think this has a potential to be their best chance, especially like Scrappy continues to play this well. It's gonna be pretty tough to keep this team together because this team has four players that could be like basically like kind of in air quotes if we're talking like NBA terms, max contract players. Yeah. Like if Standy is coming off a really good year, he could be like a max contract player. Scrappy obviously could be. We know Kleenex could be a max contract player. And if you're looking for a great man AR that's steady, Insight could be also like a max contract player. Like it's yeah. almost like they're going to, it's almost like if you're talking in NBA terms, like this, they got too many superstars and they're going to run into cap issues. Yeah. Like the Warriors basically. Yeah. Like at some point they're about to run into cap issues. So like you got to invest everything and try to get a ring out of them this year, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I agree. 
Because we also don't know what Scrappy's contract looks like. He was technically signed last year as a sub, so if this was his plus one, he may technically be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. And like, you got to yeah, assume Ultra true. has a Ultra has a chance because obviously they retain their players pretty well. They were able to keep Kleenex and Insight since like the inception of the CDL at this point, basically. So mm-hmm. like, they do a pretty good job of keeping their players, but like, you never know. Um, if Scrappy or like somebody Kleenex is to become an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year, like people will pay for those players. Like they they yeah. will get a bag to leave. Definitely, or or maybe some players want want a new change of scenery. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready for our last team? Ooh, yeah. your boys, the Vegas Legion. Donnie Temp. I can I can go ahead with mine first. It's it's pretty simple to be honest. Um. What I've got for the Vegas Legion is continue to push forward and try to become the best S&D team in the game. Like Make that your focus. Make that your goal for this year. Become the best S&D team because we saw them be very good in search. And I think that like if as long as this roster is is their roster, they have a very good chance because we know Clay can be a very good search and destroy player. Temp has been up and down a little bit in his career, but can't always be a very good search player. Then we know TJ. He's known for S&D and Prolude, also known to be a fantastic S&D player. Everybody always says he is. So like your sub duo is already great S and D players. We know Clay can be a great player, and we know Temp has the ability to be a great player. Like this team has a lot of potential to be like an elite search team, and I feel like if they do become like that top three, top two search team, I see a world where this team can get their respawn to like middle of the pack. Yeah, and yeah. kind of be like the team that I, I know it's getting like an out. I almost have to come up with a new reference for this. It's getting to be outdated, but I know you're going to know this one and like. Maybe some listeners don't know this one, but my reference for what I want them to be is always Black Ops 3 Elevate. That's who I always reference. Oh, yeah. Yep. I want them to be like that team. Like, just dominate you in search, almost never lose a search. And just, like, you just try to sneak out a respawn and you become, like, just decent enough at a couple maps that, like, they become your maps and you just try to steal one. Where, like, Elevate just basically wouldn't lose a search. And it was just a matter of if they could, like, take the CTF off you in Black Ops 3. That's who I always reference for, like, that 2 3 5 type team. Yep. I want to see Vegas put all their focus into search and just like basically if they force you to a map five, they're gonna suffocate you in that map and win. That's what I want to see them become. Yeah, definitely. I, I like the team makeup of this team so well. first of all, I don't want them to change as of right now. I, I really don't either. Even though some players are not the high the highest quality players people think of, but you no, know, I think they're pretty good together. Teamers pretty good. I said nezzle every team and continue to play as one. <laughs> so pretty similar actually to what yeah. I was saying. Be the down and search team. We got a hard point here and there. You know, go from there. And I actually really agree with you on the roster change thing. Like, do I think there are probably better players out there than like TJ and Prolu that they could pick up? Sure. Mm-hmm. I think there probably are better players available, like in challenges they can maybe pick up. But at the same time, also like, it's a fine balance between like you're just picking up players, uh, like you're just picking up better players just to pick up players that are better on paper and try to make it work. But like sometimes like. A team that might be better on paper isn't as good in in game. Like going in, I, I don't know why this came to my mind right away, but like World War Two in the beginning of the game, like Team Caliber with Chino and Accuracy and Kenny and Theory, yep, they were winning everything online. And people were like, "Well, this is kind of a fluke." Like these players, like Chino and Accuracy, like yeah, they've been around for a little bit. They're fine, but they're nothing special. Like Kenny, yeah, he played in AW. He's back. He was like good then. And like Theory, he's been around forever. He's like a fine player, but like nothing special. And like. Nobody thought they were going to win anything. Because, like, on paper, they're just, like, kind of whatever. But yeah. their teamwork was so good. And they won the first two events over teams that a lot of people, I would say, like, they are able to, like, take out teams like Optic and even Please. Rise at the time. And, like, teams that, like, people would probably say on paper were a lot more talented. Yeah. But they take them out because their teamwork is so good and they played so well together. And they also have enough talent to, like... Not mm-hmm. saying if this Vegas team is anywhere near the caliber of that TK team, because that team, if you include the roster changes, ended up winning like three events and took second at champs. Like that team was elite. Yeah. Like kind of along that same lines of like maybe there are technically better players because there were definitely better players available to them than theory. But like something about the team worked. makes up. Maybe maybe it works together. Yeah. So like I want to see if they can at least push through for one more event, maybe two more events, and just like try to become the best S and D team and like see if you can make this thing work. Yeah, surprise us. Like Especially with Vegas, event. too, because like there may be better players available, but do you think Vegas has the ability to pay some of those players potentially? No. Yeah, probably not. Definitely do not, but yeah. so far, so good for them. I, I hope to see him continue 
having some success because it is a little more fun when like I consider basically every team except maybe LAG right now to be like pretty competitive in every match. Like they're not like a guaranteed win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, playing them so like. As long as LAG can maybe get a little more competitive, like we think they could with their roster, like we're looking at a situation where like every team could be pretty darn competitive. Like no match is going to be like an absolute shoe in. Yeah, it's not fun when you just sit down and watch a match like oh Phase versus Old Paris Legion, oh thirty minute match. <laughs> yeah, and like you knew the outcome, like there was almost no way they were winning. Yeah, it's just not fun. Not fun to watch, really. <laughs> yeah, love the intense moments. Yep. All right, that's. Pretty much gonna do it for this one. You got anything else before we wrap it up? Anything else on the New Year's resolutions? Anything else to say? We got one more week to wait until we get back into matches. No matches this weekend. No, I don't got much really. Just waiting for matches to start back up. Like forever. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a while. These these mid season breaks, the mid season breaks sucked last year. This one at least made a little more sense because like it was over like, Christmas and New Year's, the holidays and everything. People could be with their families. So, like last year we had like the random breaks in the middle of the year around no holidays and it was like what are we doing here like we're bored we want to see the matches like kills yeah. the momentum of the season mm-hmm. um but yeah this this weekend we don't really have anything we'll we'll keep watching out for news and then next week's episode we'll be just maybe talking about whatever news and then we'll be doing predictions diving yep. right back in into some more in-depth predictions for those first set of matches that's going to do it for this one though if you guys enjoyed on youtube be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe um if you're not subbed and you're watching i mean it i hear this all the time when i'm watching videos but it is true if i look at the analytics it's like 70 percent of the people or more that watch the videos aren't subbed so if you're not subbed and you enjoyed drop that sub help us to get to 900 on our ultimate goal on the season of 1000 uh if you're on the audio platforms drop a follow drop a five star review also comment wherever you're listening a new year's resolution maybe for your favorite team or something like we want to hear what you guys have maybe you have something that'll spark an idea for what we do when we do it next year to get maybe a little even more variety of stuff but that's gonna do it for this one if you guys enjoyed like i said drop that like drop that comment drop that subscribe and we will see you next week with predictions and hopefully we'll do a little bit better uh this week because we know the teams or or this stage because we know the teams a little bit more but thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one